How far can we stretch the potential of renewable energies, solar, wind, and hydropower? Can they create a fully virtuous cycle of decarbonized, decentralized, and digitized energy in real life and extreme conditions? Meet the Energy Observer, the first hydrogen-powered, zero-emission vessel that has been on an unprecedented expedition to show that a carbon-free energy system is possible. C'est un bateau qui représente l'équilibre des, des énergies. Donc on a plusieurs sources d'énergie renouvelable, de l'éolien, du solaire et de l'hydrolien. On a des batteries pour gérer nos, pour stocker notre énergie à court terme et donc on fait de l'autoconsommation. On équilibre. Dès lors qu'on est en surplus d'énergie, dès lors que nos, nos batteries elles sont à 100%, on valorise ce surplus en produisant de l'hydrogène à partir de l'électrolyse de l'eau de mer. Avec une chaîne de production intégrée dans les coques, on désalinise, on, on fait de l'eau pure déminéralisée, on électrolyse, on sépare l'oxygène de l'hydrogène. By desalinating seawater that gets electrolyzed on board to generate hydropower, the floating lab catamaran has sailed 50,000 nautical miles. That is equivalent to circling the world twice in terms of distance. But can the same technology and solution be applied to the broader maritime industry and beyond? I think it could be applied definitely uh, at larger scale. So um, it's not only about renewables, but like uh, hydrogen, it, it has a really uh, a huge potential and an impressive role uh, to allow for uh, an energy transition. And um, it, it could help us decarbonize uh, fully um, the end use sectors. Shipping accounts for about 3% of greenhouse gas emissions, and that could rise to 17% of global emissions by 2050 if nothing is done. Donc, ce qui m'intéressait, c'est de développer un nouveau concept de navire, non pas pour refaire une expédition, mais plutôt pour accélérer la, 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 la transformation des navires de commerce, pour montrer qu'il est possible. De, de, de produire, de construire des navires à faible émission de CO2, faible émission carbone. Et donc, on va en plus euh, passer d'un bateau de 30 mètres de long à 120 mètres de long. Et ça sera un cargo polyvalent. Il aura une puissance beaucoup plus importante que, que celui-ci. On aura quelques mégawatts de puissance de propulsion électrique. Mais pour alimenter ce navire, on ne pourra se suffire d'un hydrogène gazeux. On devra passer à l'hydrogène liquide, donc qui permet d'avoir plus d'énergie dans, dans, dans moins de volume. On parle de 70 tonnes d'hydrogène embarqué. What about the hazards and the dangers of hydrogen? Even as recently as 2017, an Argentine Navy uh, vessel blew up because of a buildup in gases. Is there a way to minimize the dangers? So hydrogen is a very specific molecule. It's the most abundant in the world. It's very light and it's full of energy. At the same time, hydrogen is never alone. It's always combined with something, but it takes a lot of space. So if you want to use it efficiently, indeed, you need to compress it. And the more you compress, the more energy you can pack up in the same. So indeed, you are really at the limit of some of the technologies. Most importantly, it is uh, really essential uh, from a production point of view, uh, because not only it allows us to um, deploy uh, renewable energy sources uh, at a large scale, uh, but it also helps us to make our system uh, more resilient. It represents a model of a smart grid which works well. It could be reproduced well on buildings or at a much bigger scale. While the technology may be scalable, the renewable energy-powered vessel is not able to travel as fast as a conventional boat. Its journey from the Indonesian island of Lombok to Singapore took 18 days three times longer than an average ferry ride. If you look at uh, what's happening in Europe, certainly they're signaling that because of the energy system's fragility, that they need to invest more and faster in renewable energies. There's a lot of talk about ammonia, hydrogen being the next generation, zero carbon fuel, but these fuels aren't out there yet. And in fact, the infrastructure that's required to get you the renewable electrons so that you can produce a green hydrogen in order to produce a green ammonia is going to take 
a decade, maybe even more, to build up to scale. Amid hope and hype over the potential of hydrogen as the fuel of the future, the mini grid on the seas will continue to sail, crossing over to South Africa, South America, and the U.S. before returning to France in the summer of 2024. Perhaps by then, the floating lab might be able to offer clues as to how hydrogen that thrusts rockets into space with incredible power can deliver both speed and cost efficiency to propel tomorrow's ships and planes for a net zero world.